to the second brown bag lecture in our series. Um, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate the outpouring of support that we're getting for this uh, part of the sort of non archaeology program in Richmond uh, groups, I guess. Um, and this week we're totally changing directions from the uh, steam boat survey that we experienced last week. And now we're going to look at uh, the double halyard in ancient Mediterranean where Amy Brian Lee. And we're really excited to um, have this series be about a lot of different topics. And anything that any of the students want to bring to it, know that you're more than welcome. And we're still definitely ex uh, accepting submissions for next semester. So without further ado, here is Ryan. Uh, so this presentation came out of a paper I did for classical seafaring last year, and Marilyn had the privilege to edit it. So <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it down to you know less than an hour. Because if I'm not careful, it'll go on too long. Sort of like the paper. Sort of like the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> what is a halyard? Uh, essentially, it's a line that's used to raise and lower either a sail or a yard. Uh, so in Mediterranean rigging, it would be a yard. So essentially, it's just a rope that runs up passes over something on uh, the top of the mast, and then connects to the yard, so you can raise and lower the yard. Now, in modern boats, it will pass through a block and tackle. Uh, so it'll pass through a block and tackle, uh, which uses mechanical advantage, usually, to raise and lower the yard. But in the past, they didn't have those kind of systems. So basically, I'm going to look at what kind of systems they did use, um, mostly through iconography, and uh, talk about this one phenomenon. The double halyard. Now, identifying what the halyard was in ancient texts is a little bit difficult, and nobody really agrees. Um, so I'm citing Lionel Casson here, uh, who identifies the Ancoina in 4th century Athenian naval documents. Uh, they mention several different types of lines, like the backstay, shrouds, and whatnot. But nobody can really agree as to what, what line is what to mention in the documents. But <clears throat> he does talk about uh, the Naval documents do, do talk about the uh, Enquine Fiplay, so basically the double halyard, if you accept it as a halyard. So Casson explains this double halyard, um, he says it's double because it's, it's bent through a block and tackle arrangement, doubling the length of the line, <coughs> therefore explaining the double halyard. But he also says that a lot of ancient ships used two halyards. So the point of my paper is that Actually, this really wasn't the case in the 4th century, and the double halyard <coughs> being referred to is just the fact of using two halyards on the same uh, yard. So, basically you have two simple systems with two separate lines, and that allows two people or two groups of people to haul in the halyard, basically doubling the force that you're able to put you know, through the system, but without actually using the complicated block and tackle, which hadn't actually been invented yet. So, we do have mention of ancoina, so plural ancoina, being uh, working loose during a storm as early as the 7th, 7th century BC. We see in iconography that uh, a lot of the ships actually have two halyards. So, most of the iconography, or most of the evidence has to come from iconography. Archaeology is very difficult, it's very difficult to identify reading elements in iconography. You know, you'll find sheaves, or shivs, you'll find blocks, dead eyes, but to actually identify what belongs to what is pretty much impossible. So, as far as the Greek context, um, the earliest nice depictions of ring um, are from the fresco at Akrotiri. So I kind of washed out the parts of this um, scene that were restored, but all of this arrangement at the masthead is based off of a diff different ship. So you can see five pairs of rings at the masthead that the lines pass through. So in total, on this ship, there's braces that connect to each end of the yard, which is used to change the angle of the yard. There's sheets, which are connected to the bottom boom, that change the angle of the bottom of the sail. Lifts and boom lifts. Now the only lines uh, here that pass through the rings are the the brails, which they, some call them brails, they don't actually pass through braille lines, so I call them boom lifts, and then the upper lifts. But there's five pairs of rings there, so the other two must be four halyards, because there really wouldn't be anything else that passes through a ring at the masthead. 
So there's the unused rings, and there's also these lines here. Now, if you had all four of these lines, or all eight of these lines, you should expect eight lines coming down next to the mask, but you only see four. It's hard to say, are those, you know, the halyards passing down next to the mast, or are they part of the loose? Now, a lot of other Minoan ships, or a lot of iconography, um, both in the Minoan period and Mycenaean period, doesn't really depict reading. So you'll get ships like this, where you see the mast and rings at the top of the mast, but no actual reading. Or, you know, you'll get very stylized representations. So this one, you know, you can see has a forestay and three lines here, possibly backstays, possibly rail lines. You're not really sure. But you also see this kind of ring arrangement at the top of the masthead. Again, here's a late Palatic 3C jar. You get the rings and a forestay and a back forestay and a backstay, but no real rigging. <coughs> In the proto-geometric period, it kind of switches. Instead of showing standing rigging, they start to show running rigging. But it's pretty simple. And you can only really, really faintly make out two lines running on either side of the masthead here. Now, because from now on they pretty much only show running rigging, you can pretty much assume that these are elements of the running rigging and not the standing rigging. You could just, you know, you could make the argument that these are shrouds, you know, used to basically hold the mast up, but the fact that none of the ships from now on really show any standing rigging kind of, you know, lends to the argument that these are part of the running rigging and thus maybe halyards. Now this is my favorite depiction. Um, it's an ivory plaque from the sanctuary of Artemis Orphea. Uh, it's from the 7th century BC. Um, you can see it's a, a galley, or a, a, like a, Pentaconter, triconter, with a sail. You can see the uh, yard here with the sail all furled up. And there's two sailors on either side of the mast hauling on lines. And then one sailor here is kind of either holding or clutching onto the forestay. In my opinion, this is the best evidence for these two lines on either side of the mast being halyards. Because <clears throat> it looks like they're either about to depart and are therefore raising the, the yard about to deploy the sail, or they've just come in and they're putting it down. So you can see that a little bit better there. So you see the central line is the mast, and the two lines on either side are uh, lines. There's some kind of circular thing up top. It might be um, somewhat like that ring arrangement on the Minoan ships. And then he's either just holding on to the forestay, or he's possibly, I don't know, tying it up because they just raised the, raised the mast. Not really clear. In the archaic period, uh, you see a lot of galleys with rigging depicted, and again, it's mostly the running rigging. Very rarely uh, do you ever see standing rigging. Now, this might be a forestay here, but there is no forestay on the forward mast. These are braille lines. Uh, this is a sheet. This is also a sheet. And then you get these two parallel lines on either side of the mast here. And then you don't really see a mast for the foremost but you do see these two parallel lines here. So they could possibly be the foremost halyards and the mainmost halyards. Uh, again, in the archaic period, you see on this um, Pinos, um, the uh, two lines on either side of the mast on both of these ships. So basically you can see it there and you can see it there. And the other reading depicted are braille lines. Two more lines there, two more lines there, and again, some kind of bulbous thing at the top of the mast. <coughs> that would be that uh, ring arrangement. Two more, two more, and of course, these are braille lines. This is a brace. But again, and this is probably another brace here. But again, no four stays, no back stays. They don't always show those halyards, though. Now you can see here, there's a brace. Braille lines, brace braille lines, and some kind of line here, but you know, none of those double lines for halyards. The same thing with these depictions. This one has all four, has those two double lines on either side of the mast. Now this one doesn't show it, but 